metal. It's one of those things we completely take for granted. It's in your phone, your car, your kitchen, even the chair you might be sitting on right now. But thousands of years ago, humans didn't have any of this. All they had were rocks, fire, and curiosity. At some point, someone realized that if you heated certain rocks long enough, something incredible happened. Shiny, usable metal dripped out. That discovery changed everything. It gave birth to tools, weapons, cities, and entire civilizations. This fiery breakthrough is known as smelting, the ancient art of extracting metal from stone. So today we're diving deep into what is smelting, how it worked, and how it shaped the modern world we live in. Right here on History of Simple Things. Long before people knew about chemistry, humans were already experimenting with heat and rocks. Imagine a Stone Age human tossing a shiny greenish rock into a campfire, not out of curiosity for science, but just to make the fire hotter. The next morning, they find a blob of shiny metal sitting in the ashes. That strange accident was probably one of the first smelting experiments in history. That greenish rock? Likely malachite, a copper ore, and that shiny blob. Copper, one of the first metals humans ever learned to work with. Smelting, in its simplest form, is the process of extracting metal from its ore using heat. You take a rock that contains metal, heat it up to insanely high temperatures, and mix in something to pull out the oxygen or impurities. What's left is pure, usable metal. It doesn't sound like much now, but this discovery was revolutionary. Before smelting, tools were made of stone or bone, not exactly ideal for building civilizations. Once people realized they could pull shiny, durable materials from the earth, the entire course of human history shifted. The Stone Age gave way to the Bronze Age, and with that, the first steps toward modern industry were born. So, let's break it down. What's actually happening when you smelt metal? At its core, smelting is all about chemistry and temperature. You start with ore, which is basically rock with metal trapped inside it, like copper, iron, or tin. But the metal in the ore is usually stuck to oxygen or sulfur atoms, forming compounds like copper oxide or iron oxide. The goal of smelting is to break those chemical bonds and free the metal. To do that, ancient smelters used two key ingredients, fire and charcoal. Charcoal acts as a reducing agent, meaning it steals oxygen from the metal oxide. When heated to around 1000 degrees Celsius, the charcoal combines with the oxygen to form carbon dioxide, leaving behind pure metal. It's chemistry without knowing the word chemistry. Early furnaces, known as bloomeries, were simple clay or stone structures that could reach high enough temperatures for copper and bronze. Air was pumped in using bellows, feeding oxygen to the flames. And after hours of intense heat, workers would pull out glowing, spongy metal, the bloom, which could be hammered into shape. That's smelting in a nutshell, applying heat and chemistry to transform dull rocks into the shiny metals that build our world. Once humans learned to smelt copper, they took it a step further, mixing it with tin to create bronze, a metal stronger and more durable than anything before it. Bronze tools, weapons, and ornaments spread across early civilizations from Mesopotamia to Egypt and China. The Bronze Age, roughly 3,300 to 1,200 BCE, wasn't just about new materials, it was about power. Those who controlled metal controlled progress. Bronze swords won battles, bronze plows grew food, and bronze art still stands today. Smelting had become more than a skill. It was the mark of civilization itself. But humanity wasn't done learning from fire just yet. 
As centuries passed, smelting evolved from an art into a full-blown science. By the Industrial Revolution, furnaces were no longer made of clay. They were massive steel giants melting tons of ore at once. The biggest leap came with the blast furnace, where iron ore, coke, and limestone were fed in while hot air blasted from below, turning ore into molten iron. This made metal production faster, cheaper, and scalable, paving the way for steel, the alloy that built our modern world. From ships to skyscrapers, steel became the backbone of civilization. What once took days by hand was now done by machines in hours. Smelting had gone industrial, and humanity would never be the same. Even in our high-tech age, smelting is still at the core of modern industry. Today's smelters use electricity, advanced chemistry, and massive furnaces to extract metals like aluminum, nickel, and even gold. One of the biggest innovations is electrosmelting, which uses electric currents instead of pure heat to separate metals, making the process cleaner and more controlled. But despite these advances, smelting remains energy-hungry and a major source of carbon emissions. That's why scientists are now pushing for greener alternatives. Some are experimenting with hydrogen-based reduction, which could eliminate carbon altogether, while others focus on recycling metals from electronic waste to reduce mining. From ancient furnaces powered by charcoal to modern facilities running on electricity, smelting has never stopped evolving. Its future might not glow with fire, but with clean energy and innovation. When you think about it, smelting is more than just melting rocks. It's the heartbeat of human progress. Every spark of civilization, from the first bronze blade to the steel beams of our skyscrapers, started with someone figuring out how to turn stone into metal. It's the story of curiosity, experimentation, and a lot of heat. Without smelting, there would be no engines, no buildings, no phones, no modern world as we know it. So next time you see a metal object, Take a second to appreciate that long chain of fire and invention stretching back thousands of years, because that's the power of smelting, the process that forged civilization itself. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.